In chapter two, we're going to begin looking at measurements. And today we're going to talk about, well, how do we talk about measurement numbers? Units. A measurement number usually has units associated with it. So it could be like 20 feet or 20 pounds or 20 seconds. Example one says, if this piece of pipe is measured to be eight feet in length, then it's eight times its standard one foot length. So the standard length would be one foot, and so it's eight times that. Significant digits. Every measuring instrument and every person making measurements has limitations. Measurement numbers, numbers used in technical work and in the trades, have a built-in uncertainty. This uncertainty is not stated explicitly, but is expressed by the number of digits used to communicate the measurement information. So here's how you figure out the number of significant digits. Though the number of digits that represent an actual measurement. So here are your three rules. First of all, digits other than zero are always significant. Rule two says a zero can sometimes be significant, and that is when it appears between two significant digits. It's at the right end of a decimal number. Let's give So let's look at some examples here. So if it's the if it's between two other significant digits, so like 304, that would make the zero significant. If it is then this zero is significant or marked with an overbar, so saying it's repeating, also makes it significant. A zero is not significant when it's at the right end of a full, whole number. So like in 40, the zero is not significant. Or if it's at the left end of a number, so, if you had something like this, which would be unusual, that zero is not significant either. So, if example two just got some um, points it wants to make. A tachometer reading of 84.2 RPM has three significant digits, the eight, the four, and the two. A pressure reading of 3,206 Tor has four significant digits, the 3, 2, 0, and the 6. A voltage re reading of 240 volts has two significant digits, only the 2 and the 4. The 0 is not significant because it's at the end. A voltage reading of 240 with a bar on top has three significant digits because of the bar on top. And it says that the reason the bar is on top is because this person had an instrument that could measure to that nearest unit. A voltage reading of 24.0 has three significant digits. That zero is significant because it appears to the right end of a decimal number. So again, that person must have been able to make sure that it was exactly 24 volts. A current reading of 24 or 25 thousandths of an amp has two significant digits. The zeros are not significant because they are at the left end of the number. 
Precision and accuracy. Well, if you haven't had to deal with the, these type of situations before, you would probably say that's the same thing, precision and accuracy, but they're not in technical terms. The precision of a measurement number is indicated by the place value of its rightmost significant digit. Place value being, meaning being um, thousands, one hundreds, tens, ones, tenths, one hundredths, one thousandths, for example. The accuracy of a measurement number refers to the number of significant digits that it contains. So precision deals with place value. That's nice. They both start with a P. Accuracy deals with the significant digits. Example three, state the precision and accuracy of each of the following. So for the first one, this is precise to, and with precision, we talk about place value. So this is a to the hundredth. And in this case, it's the hundredth of a second. Let's just move on to part B for precision. For part B, the zero is not significant. So it is precise to the nearest 10 seconds. I suppose you could say that this could be rounded. So you're not really sure. And so it's only precise to 10 seconds. And then C is precise to the nearest tenth of a second. Because it is... It has a decimal um, to the tenth place. Let's go back and talk about accuracy. So accuracy deals with significant digits. There are three significant digits here. So it is accurate to three significant digits. The second one only has one significant digit. So it is accurate to one significant digit. And then C has four significant digits. So we can say that it is accurate to four significant digits. And a little point to make is that A is considered to be the most precise because it has the most decimal digits. It's to the most decimal places. While we would say that C is considered the most accurate because it contains the most significant digits.
The greatest possible error. The greatest possible error of a measurement is defined as half the precision of that measurement. If you're reading a measurement yourself with a measuring tool, the greatest possible error is half the smallest division on that scale of the measuring tool. Example 4 says, suppose the weight of a steel bar is given as 14 and 6 tenths pound. The weight of the bar has been measured to the nearest tenth of a pound. So the precision of the measurement is 0.1 or one tenth of a pound. The greatest possible error is half of that. So half of one tenth or 0 0.05 or five hundredths of a pound. This means that the actual weight of the bar could be 14.6 plus or minus 0 0.05. So 14.55, between 14.55 and 14.65. A tachometer shows an engine speed to be 4,700 RPMs. The precision of this measurement is 100 RPM. So the greatest possible error is half of 100. Excuse me, I have to get my cat down from being destructive. Oh my gosh, sorry about that. So um, half of 100 RPMs would be 50 RPMs. So this actual speed could be anywhere between 4,650 and 4,750 RPMs. Suppose you're measuring the length of two pieces of tubing with a ruler, as shown in this figure. One piece is slightly longer. The first piece is slightly longer than two and one-eighth inches, while the other is slightly shorter than two and one-eighths. Because the smallest division on the ruler is one-eighth of an inch, both of these would be written as two and one eighth inch because that's as precise as we can get. But the error could be half of one eighth, it would be one sixteenth plus or minus one sixteenth. Tolerance very often, the technical measurements and numbers shown in drawings and specific specifications have a tolerance attached so that you will know the precision needed. For example, the dimension on a tool could be 2.835 plus or minus four thousandths of an inch. That means that the dimension should be 2.835, two within four thousandths of an inch. So no more than 2.839 or less than 2.831. When measurement numbers are added or subtracted, the resulting answer cannot be more precise than the least precise measurement number in the calculation. Therefore, use the following rule when adding or subtracting measurement numbers. Always round a sum or difference to agree with the imprecision with the least precise measurement number being added or subtracted. So example five asks us to add these three numbers. And we can do that. Let's line them up. We'll line up the decimal places. So 4.1. 3.5, 1.27. You have to make sure the decimal places add up if you're doing it by hand. And they would add to be 8.87. But we cannot say that that is the answer. We have to say that since these two measurements are only precise to the nearest tenth, then our answer 
must be in tenths. So 8.87 would round up to 8.9 seconds. Let's look at a few more. So add or subtract. If we add 4.6 gallons to 2.145 gallons, you can put that in your calculator, you get 6.745. But because this first one only has, is precise to one-tenth of a gallon, or a tenth of a gallon, then we have to round it to 6.7 gallons. We must stay in the tenths. 0.24 miles minus 0 0.028 miles would be 0 0.212 miles. But because this first one only goes to, to the hundredths place, then our answer can only go to the hundredths place, 21 hundredths of a mile. And then we have 2,473 pounds plus 321.2 pounds. That would be 2,794.2 pounds. But because this first one doesn't have any decimals to, or places to the right of the decimal, then we have to round to the nearest whole number. 2,794 pounds. Now, this, this also applies when you're dealing with fractions, okay? You have to change the fraction, like three-fourths would be two decimal places, or one-half would just be one decimal place. Multiplication and division of measurement numbers. When multiplying or dividing measurement numbers, we need to pay special attention to both the proper units and the proper rounding of our final answer. So with addition and subtraction, the answer to the ar arithmetic calculation has the same units as the numbers being added or subtracted but this isn't true when we multiply or divide. If we multiply three feet by two feet, you have to first take into account the three times two gives you six, and then you have to take into account that you're multiplying feet by feet. Feet times feet is feet squared or square feet. So your answer here would be six square feet. If we multiply two inches times three inches by five inches, two times three times five is 30. Inches times inches times inches is cubic inches. So our answer would be 30 cubic inches. Visualizing units, here you can see that this is one dimension. We just have a, a line okay, representing one inch. But if you've got two dimensions, then you've got one inch times one inch. It gives you a square in this case. If you've got three dimensions, then you have one inch times one inch times one inch, giving you a cube in three dimensions. Example eight says divide 24 miles by 1.5 hours. 
Okay. So we would take 24 divided by 1.5, that's 16, and miles divided by hours, well, we know that stands for MPH, miles per hour, right? We could leave it in miles over hours, but we know that MPH stands for miles per hour. So our solution would be 16 miles per hour. Note that both H and HR are acceptable abbreviations for hour. When multiplying or dividing quantities having compound units, it's sometimes possible to cancel or divide out common units. So let's see. For example nine, we want to divide or multiply 45 miles per hour by four hours. So we would say 45, and we're going to split this up, miles per hour. And that's one hour. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a one down there on the bottom. So 45 miles per one hour is what that means. Times four hours. So what we can do is since there's an hour on the bottom and an hour on the top, they can cancel out. And we're left with 45 times 4, which is 180 miles. So 45 miles per hour times 4 hours is 180 miles. B says divide 42 square yards by 6 yards. Well, what does 42 square yards mean? That's yards times yards, right? And we're dividing by 6 yards. So one of our yards can go away. 42 divided by 6 is 7, and we're just left with yards. So, 7 yards. When we added or subtracted, our answer couldn't be more precise or have more decimal places than our least precise number being added or subtracted. With multiplying and dividing, we equate that with accuracy or significant digits. So it says when measurement numbers are multiplied or divided, the resulting answer cannot be expressed with greater accuracy than the least accurate measurement number in the calculation. The result of the calculation should not be written to reflect greater accuracy than any number used in that calculation. Always round a product or quotient to the same number of significant digits as the least accurate number used in the calculation. So for example, 10. We're going to multiply 4.35 times 3.6 is 15.66, and feet times feet is square feet. But we have to think about what we can round to. Now, there are three significant digits here and two significant digits there. So we can only round to two significant digits. That would take us up to 16 square feet. For number 11, it says divide 35 
or 375 miles by 65 miles per hour. Now, something I need to tell you, when you divide fractions, you flip the second number and multiply. So this is saying the same thing as 375 miles times one hour over 65 miles. We flipped the second fraction and changed it to multiplication. Okay, so what we're actually doing here is we're taking 375 and dividing by 65. That gives us 5.7692. And our miles go away. We're just left with hours. But we have to think about our significant digits. So 375 had three significant digits. 65 only had two. So we can only round to two significant digits. So up to the nearest tenth. So 5.8 hours. Note, numbers that result from simple counting should be considered exact. They do not affect the accuracy of the calculation. So, for example, if a flywheel turns 48 rotations in 1.25 minutes, the fact that 48 is two significant digits is not going to affect our answer. Our answer can be still be answered in three significant digits. It would be 38.4 rotations per minute. So example 12 says each inch of cold rolled steel weighs 22 hundredths of a pound. A certain job calls for 27 and a half inches of the steel. How much of this or how much would this amount weigh? So we've got the amount for each inch, and we need more than that. So we're going to multiply 0.22 pounds by 27.5 inches. Now it's 0.22 pounds per each inch, right? So we need to write that down. We need to put that into our calculations. Each inch is 0.22 pounds. So now we can see that the inches will go away. And we're left with multiplying, we get 6.05 pounds. But is that our answer? Well, here we have two significant digits. Here we have three. So we can only answer to two significant digits. So round to the nearest tenth, 6.1 pounds. Decimal equivalents. Some of the measurements made by technical workers in a shop are made in fractions. But on many shop drawings and specifications, the dimensions may be given in decimal form as shown in this figure. So the steel rule used in this shop or other technical work may be marked in eighths or sixteenths or thirty seconds or even sixty fourths of an inch. A common problem is to rewrite the decimal number to the nearest thirty second or sixty fourth of an inch and to determine how much error is involved in using that fraction number rather than the decimal number. So example 13, it says in the drawing shown, find the fraction to the nearest 30 seconds of an inch equivalent to 
point four six two or four hundred sixty two thousandths. So we've got four hundred sixty two thousandths of an inch. And it says we want to find the fraction to the nearest 32nd. So what we want to do is this. Put a 1 on the bottom. Multiply both the top and the bottom by 32. That gives us 14.784 over 32 inches. Reducing that fraction so that it doesn't have a decimal infraction because we can't have that. So we need to round would be 15 30 seconds of an inch. So you can see where there's a bit of rounding error there. In part B, it says find the error involved and using the fraction number instead of the decimal number. So the error was between 15 and 14.784. Okay, I got that number right there. So we're just finding the difference there out of 32. That'd be 0 0.216 out of 32, or a very, very small number, but important. 0 0.00675, or that would be, let's see, 10 to 100,000, 10 to 100,000, 675 hundred thousandths of an inch. Rounding that would be sixty-eight ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, example four says change. 1.392 or 1 in 392 thousandths of an inch to a fraction expressed in 60 fourths of an inch. So we'll take our 1.392, put it over 1, and multiply the top and bottom by 64. That gives us 89.088 over 64, which we can't have that fraction, so we'll change it to 89 over 64, oh, backwards, 64 inches. Change that to a mixed number. We can do that. Sixty four goes into eighty nine one time with twenty five left over. So one and twenty five sixty fourth inches. And our last example says. Find the error involved in using this fraction instead of a decimal. So take our, this number, and subtract off 89. That would be 88 thousandths over 64 of an inch, which would be approximately 
14 ten thousandths of an inch. That concludes this section.